Antlers are the standard way of reacting to changes in Ansible, and they're one of the best ways to keep your playbooks and roles item potent. Handlers are a special kind of task that only run when other tasks in your playbook or role make a change. In this video, I'll show you how to use handlers in Ansible, starting with the super basic example of restarting a service when Ansible changes the service configuration. After the basic example, I'll do a rapid fire deep dive into some common questions and gotchas that should save you a bunch of time when you're using handlers in your own projects. G'day everyone, I'm Percy from toptechskills.com and I'm here to help you build great software systems with programming and DevOps. Let's jump into VS Code and get started. I'm in my standard Ansible dev environment in VS Code now with a basic playbook open in my editor. The playbook has a single play called Basic Handlers Workflow that runs against all hosts with become true to run all tasks as root. We've only got three tasks in the play. The first task installs Nginx using the apt module, and the second task updates the default Nginx site configuration using the copy module. The configuration tells Nginx to listen on port 80 and return a plain text response of hello world for all requests. Now, in order for Nginx to pick up the changes we made to its configuration, it needs to be either restarted or reloaded. Typically with Nginx, you just do a reload, so I've added a third task that reloads Nginx using the service module. So this playbook is good to go, but you might have noticed a problem. We're going to reload Nginx every time this playbook runs, regardless of whether the config task makes any changes or not. Reloading Nginx every time is unnecessary and means our playbook isn't idempotent. Let's prove to ourselves that this is the case by quickly running the playbook in the terminal and observing its behavior. I'll bring up VS Code's built-in terminal at the bottom of the screen and run the playbook with ansible-playbook playbook.yaml. In this first run of the playbook, we get changed statuses for all three tasks as Ansible installs Nginx for the first time, changes the default site configuration, and reloads the Nginx service. I'm using the standard development environment from the free part of my course, so I can confirm our playbook worked by heading to the terminal and running curl 10.0.0.2. In the standard out, I get hello world, which matches the configuration and means everything in our playbook worked. I'll go ahead and run the playbook one more time. This time, the install and config tasks both return an OK status, indicating that Ansible didn't make any changes, but the reload Nginx task still reloaded Nginx unnecessarily. What we really want is for the reload task to only run when the config task makes a change, and that's exactly what handlers are designed for in Ansible. So let's go ahead and see how we can convert our reload task into a handler. In a playbook, you define handlers under a handlers key on the play. I'll go ahead and add a handlers key above our tasks key. The order of the keys in a play doesn't matter, but I like to keep the tasks key at the bottom since it usually has the most content. To convert our reload task into a handler, all I'll do is cut and paste the task from under the tasks key to under the handlers key. To get the handler to run in response to a change in another task, we need to notify the handler from that task. In our case, we want the reload handler to respond to changes in the config task. So all I need to do is add a notify key to the config task and set the value to the exact name of the handler, which is reload nginx. With this change, the reload handler should only run when the config task returns a changed status. I'll confirm by heading to the built-in terminal and rerunning the playbook. This time, we only see our install and config tasks in the output and no reload task, which is exactly what we expected since there were no changes. So far, so good, but let's go ahead and confirm that the reload handler will in fact run if there's a configuration change. I'll change our configuration to return hello ansible instead of hello world, then head back to the terminal and rerun the playbook. This time we get a change status for the config task, which notifies the reload handler and causes it to run at the end of the play. So that's the most basic way to use handlers in a playbook. Define your handlers under a handlers key and notify them from your regular tasks. More commonly though, you're going to want to use handlers within a role instead of directly within a playbook. So let's see how you can do that. I've already prepared an empty role and a playbook to run that role called playbook underscore role.yaml, which I'll open from the sidebar. All this playbook does is run my underscore role against all hosts as root. At the moment, this role just has an empty tasks file. So I'll go ahead and copy the tasks from the original playbook, 
over to the roll while making sure to remove the indentation. Now we need to define the handlers for the roll, which you can do by creating a main.yaml file in a handlers directory within the roll. I'll go ahead and create the handlers file by clicking the my underscore role directory in the sidebar and creating a new file at handlers forward slash main.yaml. This time I'll copy the handler from the original playbook and paste it into the roles handlers file and fix the indentation. I'll head down to the built-in terminal and run the new playbook with ansible hyphen playbook playbook underscore role.yaml. We didn't make any changes, so all the tasks returned an OK status and the handler didn't run. If I head back to the roles tasks and change the configuration back to hello world, then bring up the terminal and rerun the playbook, we'll see a changed status for the config task as well as the reload handler running in response. So, using handlers in roles is also dead simple. All you need to do is define your handlers in the handlers directory of the role and notify them from your roles tasks. Those two examples are gonna cover the basics of what you need to know to use handlers in the real world. But if you're writing production Ansible, knowing the answers to some basic questions about handlers is gonna save you a lot of headaches and time. So I'm gonna do my best to quickly demonstrate all those answers as quickly as I can. Let's jump in. Firstly, when exactly do handlers run? In our examples, it looks like the handler is running immediately after the config task, but actually, handlers run at the end of the play in which they were notified. As a reminder, a playbook is made up of one or more plays. In our case, both our playbooks only have a single play, but we could have more, and any handlers triggered in an earlier play will run before the next play. Let me demonstrate both points by making some super quick modifications to our first playbook. I'll open playbook.yaml and at the end of the tasks list, I'll add a new task called additional task in first play. Select the built-in debug module and emit the message do something at the end of first play. Next up, I'll add a new play at the end of the playbook, call it second play, run it against all hosts and add a tasks key. I'll add one task to the second play called task from second play and use the debug module to emit the message do something in second play. Now when we run this playbook, the config task should change your config to return hello Ansible instead of hello world, which should notify our reload handler. I'll head to my terminal and run ansible-playbook, playbook.yaml. Let's take a close look at the output to see what's going on. As expected, our config task returned a changed status, which should have notified our reload handler. But since handlers run at the end of the play, the additional task at the bottom of the first play runs immediately after the config task. After that task, we're at the end of the first play and our reload handler runs. Only once all the handlers for the first play are complete do we move on to the second play and its tasks, which is why the second play's output shows up after the reload handler. Second, what happens if you trigger the same handler from multiple tasks? The answer is that in a single play, a handler will run at most once, no matter how many times it's notified. We've already seen what happens when a handler is not notified at all, or when it's notified once, so let's quickly prove what happens when the same handler is notified more than once. In our playbook, I'll notify our reload handler a second time by copying and pasting our config task and calling the second one, update default site config again. I'll change the first config task to write hello world, which will make both these config tasks return a changed status. That will mean our reload handler gets notified twice, and I'll see what happens by bringing up my terminal and rerunning the playbook. Scrolling up in the output, we can see that both config tasks returned a changed status, but the handler only ran one time at the end of the play. This demonstrates that handlers will run at most once, no matter how many times they're notified. Third, can you trigger multiple handlers from the same task? The answer is yes. All you need to do is provide a YAML list of handler names to the notify key of a task, and all the handlers in the list will get notified if the task returns a changed status. To demonstrate, I'll go ahead and add another handler under the handlers key in the playbook and call it second handler. I'll select the built-in debug module and emit the message second handler. I'll also add changed when true, so this handler always returns a changed status and shows up in yellow in the output. I'll update the first config task's notify key to be a YAML list instead of a string, 
and add a second list item with the value second handler, then bring up my terminal and rerun the playbook. In the output, both our config tasks return to changed status, and a little further down you can see that both the handlers ran in response to those changes. The reload nginx handler ran because it was notified by both config tasks, and the second handler ran because it was notified by the first config task as the second item in its notify list. Fourth, can handlers trigger other handlers? The answer is yes, and this can work well if you want to respond to changes in handlers or you want to strictly enforce the ordering of handlers. To demonstrate, I'll copy and paste the second handler and change both instances of the string second to third using multiple cursors. I'll trigger this third handler from our reload nginx handler by simply adding a notify key and setting the value to third handler. I'll confirm the behavior by bringing up my terminal and rerunning the playbook. In the output, we can see once again that both config tasks return to changed status, and a little further down, we can see that all three handlers ran. The reload engine X and second handler ran because they were notified by the regular tasks, and the third handler ran because it was notified by the reload engine X handler. Fifth and final question. Can you make sure any handlers that need to run are run at a specific point in your playbook or role? Once again, the answer is yes, and it's called flushing handlers in Ansible. Flushing handlers is a really useful way to make sure any restarts or reloads that need to happen are done before a certain point in your playbook or role rather than at the end of the play. In fact, this is an advanced technique we use in my Ansible course when we're setting up streaming replication between two instances of Postgres. In that example, we want to make sure that if the Postgres configuration changed, that we restart the service before continuing with the rest of the role, which is exactly what flushing handlers does. To demonstrate the flush handlers behavior in our playbook, I'll add a new task in between our two config tasks and call it flush handlers. I'll select the built-in meta module, and on the same line as the module name, I'll set the value to flush handlers. What this task will do is ensure that any handlers that have been notified so far are run before continuing to the next task, and it will remove them from running at the end of the play. I'll bring up my terminal and rerun the playbook to confirm the behavior. Scrolling up in the output, we can see that the first config task returned a changed status, which is followed by the flush handlers task with no output. After that, all three of our handlers ran. Scrolling down, we see the second config task with a changed status and the additional task in the first play, followed by the reload engine X handler and third handler at the end of the play. The reload engine X handler ran because it was notified by the second task after we flushed the handlers, and the third handler ran because it was notified by the reload engine X handler. The second handler didn't run since it wasn't notified again after the handlers were flushed by our task. This is a pretty complex situation, and if it doesn't make sense the first time round, I highly encourage you to clone the code from the GitHub repo I've linked in the description and run the code yourself. Running and experimenting with Ansible code in a local dev environment with VMs is such a good way to learn and develop Ansible, and I've linked full instructions for setting up the dev environment I use in the description as well. If you'd like to see how you can use handlers to build a real-world project and support me at the same time, check out the link to my course in the description. That's it for handlers. Hit me up in the comments with any questions or feedback. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you found this video useful.